Good afternoon, everybody. Special time, noon. Happy Thursday, April 12th, 2018. I'm Zach. This is Sportitude. The NBA playoffs are upon us once again. Here we are. It's going to be a very exciting run in this postseason. You got 16 teams competing as usual. They're not all deserving of winning the championship, but they're all going to say we have something to play for here. It's going to be a very exciting series for a number of reasons. A number of series that are exciting across the board for a number of reasons. Let's waste no time. Let's dive right in. A number of new teams, some old friends from last year, and Shout out to the Minnesota Timberwolves for ending a 14-year drought. And rest in peace, Flip Saunders, the head coach who last took them to the playoffs, passed away a few years ago after coming back to coach the team. So while we wish Flip could be coaching them in another playoff run, and we hope his family is doing well, I believe his son, Ryan Saunders, is still on the Minnesota coaching staff. So the Saunders family will get a chance in Minnesota to witness playoff basketball and be on hand for all the games. So let's dive in. Let's talk about that series first. Rockets-Wolves. They beat the Nuggets in a very exciting play-in game last night. Only the fifth such game in the history of the NBA. Jimmy Butler, just his third game back after getting hurt in the first game post-All-Star break, was out there. He was balling. He put up some big numbers, and along with the cat, Carl Anthony Towns, they did just enough to prevail with a victory. You know, they didn't play the bench much. Classic Tibbs. Ride your starters into the ground. Don't let them sit ever. And I don't like his style, and many other fans will agree with me. You don't play your starters, all five of them, 40 minutes a game all season. That's not basketball anymore. That's old school basketball. You play two stars, 38, 39 minutes, and the rest of the guys fluctuate. He doesn't care much for his bench, despite having the greatest six-man score all time and Jamal Crawford on it. You know, that is what it is. But on the Houston side, 65 and 17 regular season. The Golden State Warriors finished six games behind. They had an unbelievable seven games, actually. An unbelievable season. James Harden, he's going to win the MVP. Mike D'Antoni's a candidate for a second straight coach of the year. They brought in one of the best point guards in the game, Chris Paul. They traded seven players for Chris Paul. Are they going to get worse? Nope. I thought so, but they didn't. And they got they had a fantastic offseason. They're without Luke Mba Mute for the first round, unfortunately. I like what Houston's got going for them, all in all, with those two guys and Eric Gordon. And I think Houston's going to prevail pretty easily. I give them the coaching advantage, D'Antoni over Tibbs. We're going to take Houston in five. I'm going to say Harden averages 37 points in 34 minutes a night in this series. I really think he's going to go off and dominate Minnesota's backward. I know he's going to have Jimmy Buckets on him, but mark it down. 37 points. A game for James Harden in the series. Up next, a series I just wrote about in a preview. Thunder Jazz, four versus five. Every seed from three to seven was determined last night. Well, let's talk about the Thunder. Russell Westbrook, triple-double again. Paul George, he hits threes. That's what he's all about. He's also one of the best defensive players in all the association. Carmelo Anthony had a very disappointing season, all in all. And he's got some work to do. He's got some things to fix, you know. Uh, Melo just was not the right man for this team this year, unfortunately. And there have been talk of bringing him off the bench. Billy Donovan's not going to take that from anybody. He's going to start Melo. Who wants Carmelo to come off the bench? Nobody. And speaking of that bench, it was terrible this season. Raymond Felton led the way with seven points per game. You paid Patrick Patterson $8 million to play eight to ten minutes a night and do almost nothing. I mean, you had a backup center, Dakari Johnson, that never got off the bench, that poor rookie. You know, Jeremy Grant, six foot nine. He does everything for you, but you don't play him enough. I mean, I get it. Steven Adams is one of the best big men in the NBA. He does make $25 million, so he better act like it. But there's a lot of issues. They lost Robertson. They replaced him after a month of a Brenus Ferguson. Yuck. With Corey Brewer, who now has a knee injury. Now, let's look at the Jazz. Donovan Mitchell. He and Ben Simmons clashed all season. Who's getting rookie of the year? Who's getting rookie of the year? Is it you? You didn't play your first season. Wait, Donovan, what? Yeah, you get buckets. Spite a D. But, you know, the Jazz, they got rid of George Hill. They brought in Ricky Rubio. People are thinking that's a massive downgrade. Look at the numbers this year. Rubio had a much better statistical season and put in multiple 30-point games. Yeah, even surprised himself. Ricky Rubio scoring 30 points. Well, when you go from short hair to grease tear, shooting sleeve, and full-on tattoo, you're going to improve your game. Not really. But Ricky Rubio had a tremendous season for the Utah Jazz, and 
next to Donovan Mitchell, and they were perfect together. They could both feed off each other. They can both hit jumpers. And Rudy Gobert missed a lot of games, but when he came back, they were great. They went from being 19 and 28 to winning 29 of their final 35 games. That's 29 and 6 in a 35 game stretch. They have a much better bench. Jay Crowder, the ex Cavalier and Celtic. He has been unreal. Dante Exum, the Aussie, joining Joe Ingles, the two OCs on the squad. Ingles, one of the best players in the game at his position as far as defense and threes. He was great. Dante Exum. No one even knew he wasn't missing the whole season. He came back. I'm really surprised. Dante Exum's still playing? What? But. They helped tremendously. They got rid of Rodney Hood and Joe Johnson. They freed up Donovan's minutes, and I like what they got. This is a very hard series to predict, but, you know, I'm going to take the Thunder in six because I think we all want to see Golden State. Or, pardon me, actually, no. The Thunder would be playing the Rockets with a win. I think that would be a great series to see Russ and Harden dueling again. Sorry, Jazz. Rockets in six. Rockets in five in round one against the Wolves. Thunder in six against the Jazz. On to the Blazers and the Pelicans. Obviously, having a chance to see the Pelicans in action on their home floor this year was a very cool opportunity. Doesn't give me any rooting bias for them in what will be a very exciting series. I think this is a big one for both head coaches. Alvin Gentry hadn't taken the Pelicans to the playoffs since three years ago. Two years in a row missing it. They're without Boogie Cousins, but they have to win. They brought back Jordan Crawford, who they cut after three games. Emeka Okafor, a great revelation, four years out of the league, was back in as an NBA starter out of nowhere. Uh, Anthony Davis, the unibrow, pretended to shave it. Nope, he didn't. Had a tremendous season. He's a top five player in the game. I didn't think he was, but based on the way he was healthy this year, he proved me wrong. Drew Holiday, Ray John Rondo, one of the best defensive backcourts in the game. There's a lot of good on this team, except their small forward position is still the weak link. Each one more can score. Someone will come off the bench. Not do enough. I like Darius Miller, but not as a rotation player on a key playoff team. He's a good shooter, but he should be a second or third. He should be a third string type guy. Portland. Game time is Dame time. He hits every shot. I was watching the Utah game about 12.30 last night. Dame was not missing anything. Jumper after jumper. He's a point guard that can score as well as any other player in the game. And obviously, as a point guard, you think facilitate. With Dame, you just think buckets. He was getting it, bringing it down. No matter who was covering him, he was hitting it. Now, my big issue with Portland, who's that third option? Dame is great. Don't forget about C.J. McCollum from Lehigh. Shout out to Otis, my man at Lehigh. Uh, he has buckets uh, out there. He's been fantastic uh, for Portland alongside Lillard. But uh, that's not enough. You need more than t- two guys at six foot one and six foot two, respectively, to be out here balling. Yusuf Nurkic has been good at the center spot, but not good enough to be a consistent third option. Evan Turner's making $18 million to be a role player, not in a starring role. Uh, they got a lot of work to do, this team. And, you know, I don't think they're going to get it done. I'm sorry, Terry Stotts. They beat Houston three years ago on Damian Lillard's buzzer beater. Amazing call, by the way, from Mike Tirico. And he hit that shot over my old, player, my old favorite player, Chandler Parsons. Pelicans in six as the number six seed. They're going to move on and face the winner of Warriors Spurs. Speaking of, remember this matchup last year? It happened two rounds later. And, you know, it was very fun to see. It was KD and company against Kawhi and company. They were much higher seeds. This was the conference finals. Kawhi's barely played this year. He still hasn't returned. The Spurs have been led by LaMarcus Aldridge. This time around. And they have a very good team. Don't get me wrong. But it's a bunch of role players. Pau Gasol. Rudy Gay. Some old men. Pau Gasol again. Tony Parker. 41-year-old Manu Ginobili. They have slow-mo Kyle Anderson. You know, Patty Mills. DeJounte Murray have continued to improve their games. But they got <laughs> a lot of work to be done. Davis Bertans, one of my favorite players on this team. We're not sure what his role is going to be. Bryn Forbes. Not a better shooter on the roster. Danny Green, of course. How can I forget? But they have a tough assignment. Beat the Warriors four times before they beat you four times. You know, no Steph Curry. This team is extremely vulnerable with Curry not in the lineup. And obviously, Steph, he's one of their best players. There's no doubt. He is their best player, even with Durant being present. He's unreal. Could have won the possibly been in the MVP conversation if he didn't get hurt for so many games this year. His ankles... Very tender, have not been treating him very well this year. He's had injuries in the past, and they've always been in those ankles, so you got to hope he's okay. 
But they lost by 40 to the, to the, to the Jazz a couple days ago. By 40. All you're missing is Curry. You have Clay. You have KD. You have Draymond. You have Quinn Cook out there. You have Swaggy. That's You have everyone else. How do you lose by 40? I don't understand. They have just not been the same team without Chef on the floor. And, you know, they need him back. Uh, this is going to be a tough series. And the Spurs just scrapped their way to the playoffs this year. They had their first losing record in the Pop era. It was a tough year. But they're still in. They still have a good record. And they're still a competitor to win the West. They always are. When you have the best head coach of all time, that's always going to be the case no matter where you rank. And you cannot say that about many organizations in sports. Usually you pick on the seedings. But we're going to take the dubs. The Warriors are going to beat the Spurs, even with their banged up core, because I think Kevin Durant's really going to step up now. He knows the pressure's on him. He's asking for a new contract in the offseason. If he wants to get paid as much as Curry, possibly they both make $40 million, he's going to need to play some massive minutes. 40 a night and hit all his shots because it's on him to take 25 26 shots a night and take the shots we would expect curry to normally take so warriors in five i'm sorry spurs you're going to get a game unlike last time but it's not going to be pretty don't get it in the mirror round two rockets and thunder this series this series is going to be fun all the stars you could want pg Mello, he's still a star in my book, no matter how bad he was this year. Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Chris Paul, Clint Capella is rising to stardom. It's going to be a fun matchup, it is. And I'm looking forward to what it's going to bring us. A lot of good ball. A lot. I ain't leaving my TV for a single second when these two teams meet in the second round after disposing of their opponents. And we look at all the star power and how the teams match up. Okay, see, I think we'll have a very hard time containing James Harden. Russ won't be covering him. They're going to have to hope Corey Brewer's knees are good to go. A former teammate of James Harden knows him probably better than many. As a defensive assignment, he's the best option with Robertson out. But Russ will have his hands full with Chris Paul. I and mean, we didn't think two guys that dominate the ball could coexist. They did, and they won 65 games for the Rockets. So they lost three games all season when Paul Harden Capella, or four games when all three of those guys played. And they're going to be a tough out. I think OKC can get a few games, but Billy Donovan is not the most competent head coach. And this is these are the rounds where that matters. I'm sorry, Billy. We got the Rockets going to the conference finals as the 99.9% .9 of analysts out there, you know, except for probably Paul Pierce and maybe a Mike Wilbon of the world. And then you got to respect guys that make these bold picks, but they need to have enough evidence to back up their claims. And a lot of times we don't see that. So in round two, we are taking Houston over Oklahoma City in five. Five games, all they're going to last. And the other matchup, New Orleans, Golden State. A rematch of the first round of three years ago. It's going to be tough sledding for the Pels and the Brow. And they're going to have probably have Curry back by some point in this series. And having already dispatched of the Spurs, the Pelicans are dominant with the big man spot and Anthony Davis. And he's going to have a very good series. I think he is. But he's not enough. Draymond Green at 6'7 can cover all five positions. I just think Draymond, generally, even being a few inches smaller, has a great leap. And when Davis goes up for his jumper, he'll be right there. I think JaVale McGee is going to get some big minutes in this series as well. And we're going to have to see what kind of lineups the Pelicans utilize. Can Ian Clark, the ex-warrior, get revenge on his former team who he won a ring with? You know, that's one of the big storylines. Can Sean Livingston... Show that he's still got game. He's been down, down, down this season, and he's not playing as many minutes, obviously, now that Quinn Cook is taking this minute Steph had. All of them. And as good as he is, he doesn't distribute the same way. And I'm excited to see Rondo and Cook going at it. You know, Davis and Green, Thompson and Holiday. Drew, these are two of the best shooting guard defenders in the game. So who gets the advantage on who? But, you know, all in all, how can we keep the Warriors out of the conference finals? You just can't. They still got Clay. They still got Durant. You know, they still got Draymond. And I think Nick Young can really rebound and have a solid performance. I like uh, the matchups for Golden State more than I do for New Orleans. So, you all wanted it. Here it finally is Rockets Warriors Conference Finals. Bum, bum, bum. Here we go. So, Houston, one seed, 65 wins. Harden only missed a handful of games. Capella, 
handful of games. Chris Paul missed a bunch. But here they are. They're all healthy. They're all getting buckets, okay? And they don't have Mabah Mute, but they have Gerald Green. They have Ryan Anderson, who, by the way, should not be making $20 million. That is a travesty that they wasted their money on him. Obviously not the player we thought he'd be coming into the contract. Eric Gordon, one of the best six men in the game once again. 18 points a night. That's a man that's worth $16 million in NBA money. On the other side, Golden State. Curry should be functioning in full by now, they hope. So we're going to put the best of both teams out there. Clay and Steph, Paul and Harden. We're going to do a starting lineup matchup, assuming this is what the Rockets go with. Point guard, Paul Curry, slight advantage Curry. Shooting guard, Harden Thompson, big advantage Harden. The only person that has a big advantage on Clay in the league. Small forward, Durant, Tucker. KD, a massive advantage, but you don't want anyone besides Tucker having that assignment. The Raptors traded for him last year just so we could cover LeBron. That's the only reason they had him. Ariza Green, definitely Draymond. As good as Ariza is at shooting the three, Draymond does so much more. And the center spots changed every game for the last three weeks for the Warriors. We're going to give that advantage to Houston. So Golden State wins in three of the five categories. But I don't think that's going to tell us that they win the series. I think Eric Gordon coming off the bench is going to do a lot more than Nick Young. And the Warriors have won championships without amazing benches. But this bench is flat out terrible. Nobody that's a consistent playmaker. Andre Iguodala has been in and out all season. What's he even going to have left? He duped them out of $48 million. Nice job, by the way. And thank you for not making another team do that. Kevon Looney. He's good, not great at just about everything. Zaza Pachulia is just out there to break people's ankles. Quite physically break people's ankles like he did to Kawhi and messed up the Spurs season last year. Uh, now Nick Young can shoot, but not at the level of Eric Gordon. Sean Livingston, or if it's Quinn Cook, they'll have one good, consistent shooter off the bench. And obviously, Jordan Bell will be very important at the center spot in a series like this, especially if the Rockets try and go small, although it's going to be hard without Luke in the lineup. And on Houston side, Gerald Green, threes, 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 threes. Eric Gordon, same deal. He can also drive it to the rim. Nene, great veteran. Joe Johnson, he hits big shots for a living. Iso Joe, Joe Cool, you've heard them all. He is a great shooter, and they're going to need him off the bench to play some ISO, to do some ISO offensively. We're taking the Rockets. Goodbye, Golden State. You're not making a four straight championship. Rockets in seven. It will go the distance. It will take a lot, but they are going to do it. The Houston Rockets knock off the Kings. Goodbye, Golden State. Hello, Houston. And after the Astros just won the World Series. With the devastation of Houston. You know, they say sports brings people together. All the cities behind the Rockets, like they were behind the Astros, who are off to a great start again. It's going to be a big season for the Texans coming up. It's a good time to be a Houston sports fan. And obviously, it's a very traumatic experience for anyone in that city to go through, to take. I couldn't imagine the damage. J.J. Watt raising $30 million for the cause. No one deserves it more than the Rockets. And the way they've played basketball this year inspired by the best offensive-minded coach in the game. They're going to the finals. That's what's up. Let's go to the East. Raptors and Wizards. One versus eight. This has been a 4-5 and a 3-6 matchup in years past. Very recent years past. Throwback to the Grievous Vasquez shimmy shimmy shake three years ago in the first round. That's not happening. He's long gone from the league. Unfortunately, thanks to injuries. The Wizards limped to this finish. They were playing great ball when Wall went down. No rhyme intended. And, you know, as time went on, Sadoransky and they all showed, they couldn't sustain it. They didn't have what it took. As good as Otto Porter is at hitting late clock shots and Morris at his game, they're spending too much money on this team. Wall, big extension. Hasn't even kicked in. Bradley Beal, he's making massive money. Jan Mahimi, their backup center, is making $16 million. Otto Porter already makes $25 million. Too much for too little. 43 and 39. They have a top six payroll in the game. They finish as the worst team in the standings among all playoff appearances by all these teams. Terrible. Raptors, though. One seed. They're 10 deep. 10 deep. And that is what I think is their greatest skill. Not how good DeRozan is. Not how good Lowry is. 
Nothing to do with uh, OG Ananobi, the British rookie, or Serge, or Valanchunas. It's the bench. Undrafted stud, Fred Van Vliet. Then they have DeLon Wright, CJ Miles, who had threes in Cleveland, Indiana, wherever he's been, Utah. And in addition to that, Pascal Siakam, Mr. Motorman, high energy, and Jakob Pertl, the Polish man. They get buckets. It's a tremendous bench squad. And you usually don't rate teams based on their bench. But when you're the Raptors, and you only had two consistently good starters all season, and you finish with the best record, that tells you something. They're coached very well from the top. And I'm very impressed with what they have. I love what this team can do. And there's just too much potential for them to not succeed. The Raptors are taking down the Wizards in a sweep. Sweep. Bring out the brooms. No one's for Wall. No one's for Beal. You're fired, Scott Brooks. Even though you've done a good job. You're still fired. You haven't done enough. Raptors time. They are getting the sweep. And they are moving to the semifinals. It is all good in Jurassic Park. Cleveland, Indiana. The four versus five. Who would have thought this would be a playoff matchup? Pacers trade their best player, Paul George, for Victor Oladipo and Doma Tassa bonus. Cleveland, they're supposed to be the one seed. They got Isaiah Thomas. Jay Crowder. They traded Kyrie. That's okay. They got their guys. Nope. Wrong. Terrible start. Then they went 18 of 19. Then they lose way too many games to count with fingertips here. And then they win 18 of 27 after the trade deadline. So, and by the way, Tristan Thompson... Better leave him out of that playoff rotation. It's complete negative. The team disappointed. You don't just cheat, by the way. Not a pregnant woman just once. Twice, Tristan. Doesn't help matters that they're paying you $82 million to average six points and six rebounds while being injured for a third of the season. I'm sorry. They, you got to keep him out of the rotation. Larry Nance is better when you're going up against a team like the Pacers with Miles Turner. Dudes, guys, put it on Tay Zizic. He was so impressive at finishing in the paint while everyone else was injured. He played good minutes, a number of double-digit scoring games, 80% in the restricted area in his minutes. That's fantastic. He played great ball, and he deserves to be out there. Play the man, free Ante. He's the only player left from the Kyrie trade in Cleveland. Keep him. Play him. LeBron's going to have another massive series, I'm predicting. He had an unbelievable finish to the season, and they're going to need his production anyway. To get wins. Because George Hill, he's not scoring. Kevin Love's a great second option, but who else? Jordan Clarkson's been decent. Corver, decent. Hood, decent. Nance, same story. On Indiana's side, Victor Oladipo, Mr. Most Improved. Indiana born and raised. Indiana U. Orlando. Eh. Okay, see. Eh. Here he comes. All-star. 25 points a game. What a season. Darren Collison had the best three-point percentage and assist to turnover ratio. That's what you want in your point guard. Their backup point guard, who has he played for? Greg Popovich and Dwayne Casey in San Antonio and Toronto his whole career. He is a fantastic pickup for this team. All they have to do is move C.J. Miles and get a better point guard. And obviously Sabonis has been very good. Bojan Bogdanovic, quiet but solid. Lance Stevenson's been rejuvenated. Uh, you know, they got some good pieces. They brought in Trevor Booker, improved that bench. I like what they got going for them. I don't like them to win the series, though. Yes, Cleveland doesn't have enough consistent options in that lineup, and that will play a role of some kind in the series. But we're going to go Cavs in five. Sorry, Pacers. You had a fun season. I love Victor Oladipo. But, yeah, it's no, it's not going to happen this time around. This is the Cavs season. To beat the Pacers in the first round last year, in a very different series, a sweep, in which C.J. Miles actually got all the last second shots, we're taking the Cavs in five. So they're going to be playing the Raptors in round two. Next, Sixers Heat. This is the best series, I believe, in the East in the first round. 16 straight wins for the Sixers coming into the playoffs. Unreal. No Embiid, no problem. Fultz comes back. Saric misses games. NBD. Ursan. He's hitting threes. Bellinelli's hitting shots. Ben Simmons. Triple-double after triple-double. They've been fantastic. Bellinelli and Redick. Bellinelli we just mentioned. Threes on threes on threes. All TJ McConnell. 
took the most of a hit, the biggest hit in production when Fultz came back because he took over his role as backup point. That's it. Everyone else in this team, including Justin Anderson, who put up 25 last night, has thrived. Thrived. That's what they've done. And on the Miami side, by the way, Brett Brown should be one of four coaches getting coach of the year with Brad Stevens, Dwayne Casey, and Quinn Snyder. They should all get 25% of the awards. They've all done equally impressive jobs, and it's very hard to pick against anybody. Miami, they're in the playoffs. Welcome back. They got Dwayne Wade back. Welcome back. Wayne Ellington broke the record for most threes by a reserve. Justice Winslow stayed healthy. Kelly Olenek carrying over from what he did in Boston just with a new uniform number. Thing I don't like, Hassan Whiteside. Guys, play me more minutes. I should be out there against smaller lineups. I'm a beast. No. You're making $98 million. Your numbers dropped. You barely stayed healthy. You don't deserve anything. Everything players earn in the NBA, Hassan, they work for. You came in in the league in your prime. You came in, you get drafted. You bottom out because you're on the wrong team. Four years later, you come out and you surprise the world. You're the franchise center. My man, things change in the NBA. It's fast. Snap of a finger. Everything's different. And you know... Bam out of bio, bright future. Kelly Olenek, I think, should be the backup out of bio. I think should even start. If I'm starting Whiteside and on Miami, yeah, I'm not playing him too many minutes. He and MB got into it over the course of the year, so this could make for a good rivalry. But getting back to some positives, Goran Dragic, very good season as a starting point, but he was an all-star, only because four other players were hurt. But an all-star is an all-star. Tyler Johnson had a solid season. Well, they don't have Dion Waiters. They also have James Johnson, and he had a very good season. This is a very tough one to predict. Sixers won 16 straight. Miami's a very scrappy team with a lot of great scoring guards. We're going to go Philly in six. Sorry, Heat. It's great to see Dwayne back home, but you're not moving on. Philly in six. And the one you've all been waiting for, Celtics Bucks. Giannis and company taking on the Celtics. Very poor finish to the season. Big advantage for the Celtics here will be coaching. Brad Stevens, one of the best in the game, and one of the youngest. Joe Prunty, longtime assistant, just probably carrying out, taking over from what Jason Kidd had playing there. They need a better coach. That's why they're the seventh seed with Giannis, Bledsoe, and Middleton on their team. Should have been ranked a lot higher, but they're not, and that's okay. They're still in the playoffs, and that's what that's what matters. It's been a long time since the Bucs have won a playoff series. They had a great first round series last year. You know, with Toronto. Obviously couldn't get it done. So we'll see. Obviously Jabari Parker coming back. He played some good minutes off the bench, but was never consistently dominant. He had a couple of very good games this year, but they're still working him in. We'll see what his role is in the playoffs. I think we need to see less of Tony Snell. They're not to try now. Not only is still working in Jabari, working Matthew Delavadova, who just missed two months and just played yesterday, two and a half months. Malcolm Brogdon. He missed a long time. He missed two months as well, reigning rookie of the year. They're going to have to work all these guys back in, and that's a very tough time to do it. And why don't they find minutes for Shabazz Muhammad? He put up 22 points a couple nights ago. Yeah, he needs to be out there scoring for them. On the Celtics side, Brad Stevens, you mentioned great coach. Al Horford, all-star big man. They don't have Kyrie, unfortunately. Okay. They don't have Hayward. Ooh, okay, he only played five minutes. The fact that they got the second seed with Hayward playing five minutes and Irving missing 23 games kudos props congrats it was a very impressive year marcus morris come, came in and he had a number of big shots a lot of guys on the team did throughout big games shane larkin's been massive so has jabari bird kadeem allen all these rookies seven of them on the team now it's up to eight with jonathan gibson in the house uh, it, it was a tough year it was a trying year but they made it here they are they're gonna win the series as many people know, Dolvadova is my favorite player that will not influence who wins this series. I do think, though, without Kyrie and Hayward, Celtics still have an amazing Jason Tatum and a fantastic Jalen Brown. They're missing a lot. T. Roz, Terry Rozier, he had a tremendous season. It's not enough to win easy. It's going to take all seven games. All seven games. And now we're sticking it here. Sticking here. Celtics and Sixers, round two. If you asked me this a month and a half ago, it's a no-brainer. It's Boston. Things have changed. You need star power to beat teams with star power. And Beat will be back and healthy by now, by the way. 
We were taking into account that Joel Embiid was missing some time in the Sixers Heat series. Didn't mention it, but it was. They're still going to win. They've won 16 straight. They beat good teams. They beat bad teams. They beat all the teams in this streak. Without a loss, obviously. I don't think the Celtics can get by Philly. I think Ben Simmons is too tall for Terry Rozier. They're going to have to hope Marcus Smart is back by this time. Obviously, the longer series with the Bucs will ensure his return. Uh, J.J. Redick, Buckets, Jalen Brown going to have to really stick him. Rookie Jason Tatum will have his hands full with Robert Covington, who's a very good shooter. Sarich, and he's going to be against Horford. Baines banging with the bigs. He'll have to play more minutes. Obviously, you wish you could have a Daniel Tice. Of sorts to come in there and be a big man that can spread the floor and cover and beat all over. You don't. We're taking Philly. Ben Simmons may not be my rookie of the year, but he is still one of the best players in the game. And I got Philly over Boston in six. Sorry, Celtic fans. That your season ends here. Sixers facing the winner of Raptors Cavs. This should be fun, huh? Cavaliers, four seed. Raptors won. Flipped from a year ago. Flipped. Just like a couple of years ago, we had eight-seeded Hawks versus one-seeded Pacers, and a year later, eight-seeded Pacers versus one-seeded Hawks. How fast the times they change. Anyway, talking about Toronto's depth, I think Cleveland's bench matches them very well. I have no idea what Cleveland's going to put out for their starting lineup because it's changed constantly. You have to assume Kevin Love at center, but if not, They could bring Zizic or Nance in there. Not Thompson. We're not talking about Tristan Thompson. Out there to cover Jonas Valanciunas, who can also spread the floor now and shoot threes. Very impressive, because no one saw that coming entering the season. They match him in their bench play with the number of guys they got. Star power, LeBron and Love, probably about equal to Lowry and DeRozan. A very generous to the two guards in Toronto for calling it equal. And I don't think the Cavs are going to get it done in this series. It's going to be unfortunate. LeBron hasn't lost in round two since 2008 against the Celtics, who there's not going to see in this postseason. And it's going to be too tough. I just really like Toronto and their depth. I don't think that they can take them down. Again, DeRozan and Lowry are going to have big series. So is Fred Van Vliet. I love that bench. I love their 10-man squad. And it's just tough, man. It is. I got Toronto in seven. It's going to go the distance. And as good as LeBron's going to be, as many calls as the refs might give him, they're going to call a neutral series. And the Raptors are playing the 76ers? Yep. For, the con- for a chance at the finals. Here we are. Ben Simmons has about nine inches on Kyle Lowry. This is going to be a tough matchup. DeRozan, he's got Redick pretty easy. Valanciunas, Ibaka, Pirtle, Siakam have their hands full with Saric and Embiid. That leaves Covington and Ananobi should cancel each other out with their great defensive ability. Again, if we're talking about bench, Raptors a little better. Ilya Sova, Bellinelli, they can hit shots. Markel Fultz has been very impressive of late. Remember, he had the triple-double to close the regular season, although we're a few rounds into the playoffs. But Toronto, with their depth, their ability to change things because of the injury at the small forward position they had throughout the year, a number of guys able to come in and fill that role. I, don't, I like a lot of these matchups for Philly, but matchups don't always determine the score. You get cross matchups, you get screens for switches. Uh, Toronto un- runs a very good pick and roll and pick and pop offensive style, and as good as Philly can be, I don't think they're getting by Toronto. So, drum roll. Six games. Raptors over Sixers. We got a double R NBA championship. Welcome to the finals. You finally made it, Toronto. Welcome. Against the Rockets, champs in 94, and my birth year, 95. Here we are. Rockets, Raptors, the the two best backcourts, two of the top four backcourts, I should say. Rockets, number one, Raptors in the top five somewhere. It's going to be really fun. Now, the Raptors still have a fantastic mid-range game. They got a bunch of guys that can shoot. It's going to be a very important series for the likes of C.J. Miles. Any team has shown the ability to beat the Warriors, they can just outscore them. Well, having had, or pardon me, pardon actually, we got the Rockets, ignore Curry. We're going back. I I correct myself there. Because the Warriors have been in the finals three years in a row, it took me a moment to realize I had the Rockets. Here we are. Ignore Curry, ignore that. Teams have shown abilities, though, to beat the Warriors in the past by outscoring them. Plain and simple. 
That's what it's going to take to beat Houston. Not locking them up necessarily, but outscoring them. And this is where I think Toronto finally runs into a challenge that's too tall to take. They already beat LeBron. They already beat the Sixers. They beat the process after beating the King. They can't beat the Beard. No Razor can get by James Harden. No player, no team. Not this year. When you win 65 regular season games, that says it all. You have an elite offense. You have an elite team. And there's really nothing going against you. As good as they've been, a lot of these teams that dominate get a lot of fans that just start to dislike them because they don't like greatness. I We can all say we've been there. A lot of us have rooted against the Warriors in the playoffs. A lot of us rooted against the Yankees, against the Red Sox, against the Cubs even, who we never thought we'd be doing that against. It happens, especially against the New England Patriots. As good as they are, as fans, you don't want to see them win. You go all out rooting against them. And you come up with all these arguments. Oh, they cheated. Oh, they did this. Oh, deflate it. No. Oh, the Warriors. Oh, they have this offense unguardable. No. These teams are great. And to beat them, you have to be greater. That's what Nick Foles was in the Super Bowl for the Eagles. You know, that's what the Red Sox were against the Dynasty Yankees in 2004. These things happen in sports. Records are meant to be broken. Historic teams are meant to be disbanded after over time. Nothing lasts forever. But, now that the Warriors are gone, the Rockets took them out themselves. They didn't have to hire anybody to say, go beat the Warriors. We did it on the court. The Rockets have their moment, and they're going to capture it. No one's been against them, and no one will be against them in this series. The Raptors fan base doesn't stretch too far outside of Canada, although I will say they have one of the best home base, home fan bases in the game. Every game... Tens of thousands of people outside the arena at Jurassic Park watching on the big screen. One of my favorite things about playoff season and the Raptors being in is seeing that. And again, as good as the bench is, how are you going to stop Harden, Paul, and Gordon consistently? How are you going to stop the lobs to Capella? How are you going to stop the 65 three-point attempts a game leading to 20 makes? The Raptors can't match that three-point output. They don't have the personnel to hit that many. Rockets just hit threes. Threes and dunks. And dunks and threes and layups. No mid-range shots anymore. And it's very impressive. I'm sorry, Toronto. Dwayne Casey, you're one of my four Coach of the Year guys. Sorry, D'Antoni. You could even be a fifth if you want to. We could have five. 20% each. You're probably never going to pass that, but that's what I think. Too many good coaches to pick one. In all. All said and done. Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls. The Houston Rockets are your 2017-2018 NBA champs. MVP, James Harden. Second best sixth man in the game, Eric Gordon. Best set of defensive wings, P.J. Tucker, Luke Maba Mute, Trevor Ariza, and Gerald Green. And of course, Mike D'Antoni, finally getting that title. So it's going to be a very fun postseason, folks. Hope you're all as excited as I am to see the action kick off this coming Saturday, 3 o'clock. Spurs and Warriors, although we both know, as I said, they're not make, they're not going to make it all the way to the finals. Remember, remember, Rockets over Raptors in five. That'll do it on this edition of Sportitude. I'm Zach. See you Monday. 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 Monday.